Hello students, how are you? I hope you are all good, you are doing well. Now you are back to your homes due to COVID and due to, I mean, um, this disease. So now again, we are back to the online uh, sessions. So today I thought that I should continue uh, our uh, lecture series as I've been continuing with you people. Uh, I mean, all the, I mean, the lectures I've been uh, providing you one by one uh, regarding your theory and regarding your um, practical uh, of organic chemistry, BS part three and for MSc previous the students. So today I would, uh, after preparation of, I, ex I explained you two experiments previously we did the synthesis of paranitroacetanolide right from acetanolide in my second experiment i have uh, explained you preparation of um, aspirin that is uh, acetyl salicylic acid today i have come up with a new uh, interesting compound that is called a ship base when you react a primary aromatic amine with an aldehyde you get a uh, shift base and what is a shift base it is also called um, an imine right i m i n e imine and it's simply carbon doubly bonded to uh, nitrogen this is called an amino group c double bond n is called an amino group so i was telling you about uh, the this imine group now imine group is also called an azomethane group right when c is bonded dou doubly bonded to um, nitrogen right and with a hydrogen in it it is simply that c double bond uh, h nh is called azomethane group right and this is also called an imine group or uh, an azomethane group right or a shift base so this is what I was explaining you today. So today we are our goal is to prepare simply benzylidine aniline, right? Uh, by reacting benzaldehyde with aniline, right? So now first of all, I would like to tell you what is an uh, aniline. Simply aniline is a simply it's a it is also called um, phenylamine, right? And it is a liquid. It is in the liquid form and it's a very hygroscopic. That means when you open the bottle and uh, you will leave it, uh, take out some of the chemical from out, out from it and you will put it in the air for some time it will uh, change its color right it was uh, it's a little bit hygroscopic and it has a smell also it is not pleasant it does not contain a pleasant smell right whereas benzaldehyde it has a bitter almond smell which is uh, not at all pleasant right and uh, uh, it has got a flavor of some sort of a sweet flavor toffee like flavor also so that's why it is also sometimes it is used as a flavoring agents in the food for the manufacture of food products it can be used as a um, I mean as a flavoring agent right so um, this was something about aniline and benzaldehyde the two components that are now uh, going to be reacted together to form a shift base right so um, it is simply a reaction in which uh, you know you know aniline has got a formula that is nh2 with a react uh, with connected with a benzene ring right so now what happens that the, the lone pair on nitrogen um, uh, nitrogen has got the lone pair definitely right and that carbon and, and benzaldehyde has got you know that ch double bond o its formula is benz, uh, benzene ring with a cho at the top right so the uh, you know the carbon uh, has these uh, electron deficiencies right and so now what will happen that this nitrogen uh, lone pair they are going to attack on that carbon and the um, and the electrons that are never bonding the carbon and oxygen bond they will be moved towards the oxygen side right towards the more electronegative side resulting in the formation of an intermediate which is uh, which will be formed for some for some time and then when wa a water molecule is uh, removed from it in that step when water molecule is removed from it is, um, in, the, in the, this, this reaction process so what will happen that uh, you will get your product is that is called uh, a shift base right that is benzylidine aniline whereas uh, you know when a water molecule is removed so that means it's a uh, some sort of a condensation reaction it's condensation condensation is going on right uh, so this is a very interesting and a very simple reaction and it just completes within a period of 30 minutes it does not take a ship base is the uh, formation takes place uh, in the I mean within 30 minutes it does not take that much time then you after getting your product you will simply recrystallize it so this was something brief introduction about your experiment uh, uh, of preparation of this ship
Now for the preparation of uh, benzylidine aniline that is a ship base we are going to uh, be having few glasswares and of course um, uh, chemicals that are needed that is benzaldehyde of course it will be needed and of course aniline will be needed to you and uh, you will be needing a, I mean some sort of a, um, you can say um, uh, what you can say the glassware the glassware you'll be needing a china dish glass rod and of course a water a boiling water bath right and um, you'll be needing uh, something i mean uh, some uh, cold water to i mean in the for in after getting the reaction if, if in getting over the two steps of the reaction you'll be needing some cold water for the precipitation till the oil crystallizes or till the oil gets crystallized so now what will happen what how you're going to i mean do this experiment now keep this thing in your mind that if you do not have the benzaldehyde in a pure form that means you need to have it redistilled i mean it you have to redistill it that means you have to go through the distillation process of benzaldehyde so simply dis distill it uh, as you simply do the ordinary distillation right so go through that process right and then if you have that product fine and repeat the same process for aniline also you should have a purified form of aniline and a purified form of benzaldehyde before the reaction proceeds so now what will happen you will mix one ml you will take the minimum amount of the solvents right we do not want to waste the chemicals as we are short of chemicals we are short of so many i mean things so we do not we always try to take the lowest or the smallest minimum amount of the solvents so now you will mix one ml of uh, in this uh, redistilled or purified benzaldehyde and one ml of redistilled aniline um, in a small evaporating dish or you can say a china dish you will take right so um, and uh, you will measure these both the uh, chemicals in the measuring cylinder and now what you're going to do this uh, evaporating dish or this china dish you are going to put it over the i mean um, on a um, on um, water boiling water bath right uh, and and you will open the burner you will open your heat source whatever heat source you are using a burner or a hot plate or any other source heat source so you will start boiling it for the period of about 30 minutes right or sometimes more than 30 minutes for 30 35 minutes and you will keep on stirring the mixture with the help Allah, 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 Allah. So I was telling you, uh, you will simply um, keep it there for boiling for about 30 or more minutes. And then you will, um, during that heating process, you will be stirring it with a glass rod. You're stirring that mixture with a glass rod constantly. And if after, I mean, 35 to 40 minutes, you will observe the globules of water appearing on the surface of your, this reaction mixture that is in your, even this um, China dish. And um, this glo globule of water, they will, they will be on the surface of the i mean um that mixture right and um, uh, it uh, they will simply they will turn into some sort of an oily they can also give you an oily look also some sort of oily watery globules will be there so now what will you do at that step you are going to uh, i mean uh, put off the put off, put it off from the flame and you will left it one side over your on the on your desk and you will put it there for some time leave it there for some time till it reaches your room temperature or till it hits the room temperature right then you are going to shift it after some time when it hits the room temperature just record the temperature and then just put it in in the ice bath or, or uh, containing some ice cubes in it and stir well keep on stirring keep on stirring 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 and stirring with a glass rod till the oily product that is over it it starts crystallizing you will observe that the crystals are i mean uh, on the top of uh, floating on the top of the i mean that uh, reaction mixture and that oil uh, that oil that was uh, seen few seconds uh, ago it will start crystallizing right so um, and sometimes happen this happens that you will not get the crystals so you just keep it aside cover it with some something with a filter paper and let it um, be um, stay there for 24 hours and next day come and see that whether the crystals are there or not and fine inshallah hopefully you will get your crystals and um, you will uh, you filter them right you will if you have the crystal crop of crystals just filter them off if, if it has, has some solvent remained in it just filter it off and then you will go through the process of recast crystallization right and how that will happen 
so in the end when after i mean uh, when you uh, next day you come and you you have seen your crystals you will see that yes they are there crystals are there and uh, you will simply you will uh, filter them off and then you will dry them right and then you will do the next step that is the last step that is the most important step that is recrystallization that is why because your product you just prepared is in the raw form it's raw form it's crude right so you need to purify it you need to i mean uh, uh, go, uh, make it more purer so what you are how you are going to do through so the process of recrystallization right and that can you you can accomplish it with a methylated spirit right or uh, you can use any other um, ethanolic or methanolic solvents or and uh, like that and then after recrystallization and you will follow the same process i told you earlier how you are going to recrystallize it that is uh, you will take a minimum amount of the solvent right and you will uh, dissolve your product and you will uh, i mean uh, warm it on some uh, heat so through some heat source and then you will uh, see that uh, they are con they are all dissolved fine when they are dissolved fine you will i mean put it aside and then you will um, uh, wait till it hits the room temperature and you will still slowly observe after some time that your crystals are appearing and you will collect the crystals you will dry them in the oven and then when they are oven dried uh, if they do not need the filtration if they need the filtration you will use the suction filtration that is buccaneers filtration um, and i told you what is how you are going to filter it through Buchaner's funnel in my previous lecture what is Buchaner funnel right remember that thing it's a suction filtration and then um, you will I mean you have that product your purified product initially you had the raw product now after recrystallization you have the I mean the pure product your uricus recrystallized product and if you record the compare if you want to compare the melting points of both the products that is before recrystallization and after recrystallization you can compare the I mean uh, purity of the compound by just comparing the, um, uh, temp uh, the, the temperatures at which the compound melts right that is the melting point temperatures there will be a difference in the temperature temperatures also keep that thing in your mind the temperature mostly it uh, i mean lowers down when after recrystallization uh, so uh, this um, experiment you will observe the melting point range after recrystallization around 52 degrees celsius right then now you have your product it has got i mean you have purified product right you are successful you will feel happy at that moment that you have prepared your shift base right or just within a period of in within a one hour right you got your product and then you will calculate its percentage yield by i mean drawing the product now when you draw the product you have the you will weigh the product right you will weigh it now it has no water in it so there is you will subtract the water uh, water weight of water and you will be left with your compounds weight only so that is your practical yield and how you are going to calculate the theoretical yield i have explained you in my last experiment and i have uh, I have uploaded a video also on how to calculate the theoretical yield of your compound. So go through that video. It's the same video you will use, your same procedure you will use for this preparation also. So use that video, right? Use that video lecture on how to uh, calculate the theoretical yield of your organic compound and how to calculate the percentage yield. So once you have the practical yields, once you have the theoretical yields, now you can calculate your percentage yield. That is right you can you will be i mean you'll you will come to know that how you can calculate your percentage yield and in the end you will be left with i mean you will uh, you will have your uh, percentage of your compound that this much person our the or, the prepared organic compound was synthesized and we prepared our uh, synthesized compound in this way and the melting point of the compound come turns out to be uh, 52 degrees celsius or something and the percentage yield of the compound is this so this is how you are going to i mean end up with the with a successful way of uh, first synthesizing your compound and then uh, going through the recrystallization process and now in this experiment you uh, i mean you will learn three things that is how to distill your compound solvents the solvents that are provided to you should distill them and then use them for your experimental work I hope you will find this video interesting and you will learn from it. You will compare it with your scheme and you will write it down in your journals. Write down on your journals the third experiment. This is the third experiment. Thank you.